We want to start by welcoming you all. Um, I'm Myra Peter, the owner of PDP Trucking Hello. Inc. We thank you for making the time to be here with us tonight. Um, just like I was saying a couple of minutes ago, we are touching on a lot of different subjects that are uh, of importance to you guys. Uh, we know that there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Uh, we're going through difficult times, but we're here for you. And one of the main reasons why we do what we do is because we want you to be successful. We want you to uh, make sure that you are not just, you know, making it through this time, but actually profiting through this time. And so for that, we have a lot of different subjects that we're going to be touching um, on. So please make sure you stay until the end. Uh, we also have our drawing at the end. We have our MVO. So we there, there's a lot of good things that we're going to be um we're gonna be uh, touching on. So to start, um, I just wanted to remind you all that we are here to stay. Uh, PDP Trucking Inc. has been in business since 2006, and we are um, proudly to say that we have been through all the different uh, cycles. You know, there's five different cycles. cycles, and it's five of them. Um, we're talking about, you know, good cycles bad cycles we've been through it through it all and so all the information that we have is based on all the data that we have accumulated throughout the years you know um it's been 15 years since peter started the company and so he has been through some difficult times he's also been through you know some really good times in the industry so one of the main purposes of us being here with you tonight is to guide you to coach you and advise you on what to do during these difficult times uh, we're gonna start with a video this video was actually recorded uh, recently and it's in regards to what you guys have have available on your dashboard majority of you have already seen this on your dashboard maybe not all of you know um, how to utilize it in your advantage or some of you don't really understand what the purpose of having that in your dashboard is is that big map that you see as soon as you log in and it's a trending capacity map and we are making this video um, to guide you into utilizing this on your everyday um, following the market it's something that we have been emphasizing on and so this will show you um, where the trending capacity is so that you know what areas you need to go into and what areas you need to avoid uh, all of this data is available for you for free it's the part of, of the admin fee that you're already paying for so please take advantage of it and without further ado we're gonna go ahead and, and um, show that video for you guys please make sure you watch it until the end uh, PDP has developed this um, uh, map based on the data but we uh, made it special to us because uh, as you know we are uh, self-dispatched owner operators only we do not have drivers okay and we are over the road and regional we don't do uh, uh, you know local uh, runs because of uh, our structure but also because of uh, you know uh, it doesn't produce as much compared to the other so uh, and if you have questions about that talk to PDP we can, we're gladly uh, you know uh, be able to explain it to you uh, but the idea is this map is different and I want to show this and kind of uh, explain to you what it means, how to use this map. Do you want to know how to make the most out of this, how to, uh, how to um, uh, jump from place to place and make the most money on every load? So uh, I can show you a couple tips on how to use this map and I mean uh, uh, the sky's the limit. Um, yes. But um, the difference is we took out all of the local markets. Uh, we've uh, focused on specifically over the road and regional. Uh, and instead of doing a big blob of uh, 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 states, uh, we broke it down into markets uh, in the smaller pieces. And um, I have uh, two markets images in here. Uh, one is as of um, April 18th. And another one is of uh, today, uh, May 2nd. Just for an example, as you can see, uh, I mean, the data changes daily. 
um, uh, it's uh, available for you to uh, to see uh, you know what's going on in the market uh, where to go uh, then we have um, supply chain pricing uh, power index uh, which is basically a collaboration of all of those uh, together um, uh, throughout the US and to show you where what's the market been doing pretty much historically um, there's a lot more updates to come, but I want to uh, jump into this map uh, to show you what it means and uh, to kind of give you uh, points. I have five points that I uh, thought of um, and uh, let's get started. The first point that's very important to understand is that PDP trending capacity map, uh, uh, this map that uh, what it's called, uh, is what is it? It's very, very under, uh, important to understand, to define it, you know, what it is. Because I've heard people say, well, you know, it don't work, uh, Peter, you know, because some people thought it was a, a rates, where the rates are. That's where it is. No, I mean, it's much more. Uh, it's much more, you know, just giving you something with rates is too simple. You know, there, this map actually brings a lot more uh, data than you think. So, very important to understand that this map is uh, is a visualization of an index calculation. Okay, this is very, very important. Index calculation, not freight rates. Okay, calculations of changes in the markets from going back days, weeks, or months into the past, into the history. Why? To be able to predict the behavior of the near future market. This is very, very near future markets. That, I mean, we can't predict the future, okay? It's very hard to predict the future. Uh, as, uh, the farther it is, the harder it is. But we can try to predict the very near future. So, uh, number two, uh, very important to understand is the colors. So, the red is historical changes of supply and demand index heading downward, okay? And then the green is historical changes of supply and demand index going upward. Very simple, right? Uh, number three, it's very important to understand is that uh, the darker colors, it means the historic index changes with big or strong index differences. Uh, you have a boy here on the, uh, sitting on a hard, solid, you know, brick. It's something tangible, it's solid, okay? It's much stronger, uh, so you can kind of think about it like that. And then you have a little girl, the opposite of that is the uh, lighter color, uh, uh, you know, uh, the little girl jumping on a soft uh, pillow, because that represents a historic index changes with small and soft index differences. You know, if you've heard this, market is bull, market is uh, soft, you know, market is uh, strong, market is, you know, all of these opposites, um, uh, big, small, strong, soft, um, uh, bull, and, oh man, I'm <laughs> uh, trying to remember the other one. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's very important to understand. Number four uh, point is uh, what's important to understand is that um, this map cannot be used to book multiple loads way into the future, okay? Um, it comes with experience and maybe, maybe, uh, you know, as we get better at this, we'll be able to predict the future much more accurate and much farther. But uh, just like with any future predictions, okay, uh, the farther you're out, the less uh, possible it is. So this means, I have an example here, for example, let's say that uh, we are on Tuesday, let's just say right now we're on Tuesday, and uh, we have the history from Monday and before. You got to understand, we don't have the history from Tuesday yet, okay, because it hasn't happened yet. You're in the morning on Tuesday, and you have the map pulled up. It's showing you Monday and the past. Based on all the changes in the index, it's telling you that today, uh, with where you book and go into that next market, there's an 80% chance that by the time you get there, uh, this is what it'll be. 
as you can see, every day it drops by approximately 10%. Now, I mean, I do want to put a disclaimer, freight waves, they have their own, uh, you know, uh, sometimes they think uh, uh, it's much better than uh, the market or much better than their predictions. I, I, I like to be on the cautious side, okay? So that's why, uh, and this is an estimate too, okay? Uh, but that's why I have it broken down basically every day for you to easily, more easily to understand. Let's just say theoretically it drops 10% every day from today and it starts at 80. So that means you pretty much have until next Tuesday, which is already 10% accurate. Okay. After that, it's the unknown. So um, you can't really expect to use this uh, map to try to book loads, you know, two, three, five loads ahead of you. Um, but you can for sure, uh, you know, use this uh, for your near future. Okay, this is why this is very important to understand. Um, I would say that uh, as the best versus worst use on this, uh, if you look at these maps, you know, the worst idea is probably to go from dark to uh, red, you know, to another dark red. Um, going into dark areas expecting not to had uh, not to dead head out i mean uh, i would say that's probably worst case and um, uh, it, it's probably a better case uh, a better idea to go from green to green uh, but it's not it's not the best i would say the best uh, idea is for you to book loads from a dark green going into a red uh, the lighter preferred, most likely, but any red. I mean, even if you have a dark red, but as long as if you have dark green right next to it, okay? Uh, and for you to plan to pick this up today. So, again, if you focus on dark green, booking load out of dark green to go into any red with a dark green right next to it, for you to load today and then to be able to deliver in let's say two three uh, days and pick up another load from that area that you uh, that you pick up pretty much you know shortly after don't wait too long and this is very important because if you look at these maps uh, you can see that uh, obviously it changes every day uh, but pay very uh, close attention on where the colors are. So like for example, uh, uh, if you can see uh, in here, uh, this is Dallas, Texas area, it's dark green. Um, on um, April 18th, uh, let's, uh, you know, I'm in Dallas, I live in Dallas, so I'm sitting in Dallas and I'm like, okay, where do you wanna go? Well, if you go to the next uh, dark green, which is up here up north, uh, you know, Ohio, Chicago, well, guess what? You're most likely not going to get a good pain load because everybody knows, including the, I mean, the market knows, every broker knows that when they post a load from Dallas to Ohio, that thing gets covered in an instant because, you know, there's a lot of people uh, that will want to jump to the next, uh, you know, great thing. And most likely you will be able to book a load, but it ain't going to be a great load. So you're better off zigzagging a little bit up there or something like if that's the goal to go there. Uh, but let's say, uh, you know, you want to go to Indiana right here, which is red. You're probably going to get a bigger pain low or better pain load from Dallas to this Indiana red area because there's less people who want to go there. But there's a dark green right next to it. So you just, you know, after you drop that load off, you just start booking load from that uh, dark green and then you just follow the pattern, keep going, uh, keep doing that. What you don't want to do, obviously, is go from uh, dark green Dallas, for example, and go to New Mexico. And, you know, if you're right here in New Mexico, you can see there's a lot, a lot of red here. So uh, for you to, it's most likely if you're sitting in New Mexico when it's this red, you have maybe one or zero loads pop up in a whole day. And you're like, 
yeah, it was hard. I'll just wait another day. I'll just take a chance. Well, the problem is it's still going to be red because the trend, look how dark it is. There is a big trend going red, going downward. It's most likely not going to change anytime soon. So it's very important to understand that if you're in that, if you're stuck in there, I mean, if you live there or if you went there or you stuck there, you have to go to the, uh, to the green. And I mean, this map, if what it does, probably the best thing out of this is it cuts down on your time of thinking, well, maybe I should wait another day or two and maybe it'll get better. This map can pretty much tell you that it's not getting better anytime soon. You might as well just deadhead somewhere out. And where it's green, it will tell you where is the most best, you know, place you can probably book a load out of right now. So if you have, you can see, you know, a little bit north in Colorado, a little bit south over here. Uh, uh, it's kind of getting green, but it's still not green. Uh, I mean, if you really want to go to Laredo, uh, it's most likely you'll get something out of there. Uh, but what's interesting, look at this. This is today, right? So you can already see that uh, the market is changing towards better uh, as May. You know, we're talking about May uh, 2nd, 2022, as we speak right now. Look at this, the difference between these two maps. Okay? It changed. It changed gradually. Uh, if it does change uh, uh, instantly, you better watch out for those uh, because uh, it can do that. Like, for example, I promise you, looking at uh, Florida, everybody in trucking knows that Florida picks up for about six weeks, somewhere around May-ish, okay? It hasn't happened yet, but look at this. Look at this map uh, in, the, in, this, uh, uh, in uh, April over here. It's white. And then when you get to May, it's already greenish. I mean, I promise you that uh, there will be some green visible uh, in Florida for a spick out of the whole year. This is very, very important because it can change and you gotta, you gotta look at this map pretty much if you're a newbie, if you're just starting out, you gotta look at this map uh, you know, almost daily to know where you're going what to do, you know, where not to go, or at least every time you're booking a load. And that will help you pretty much to jumpstart uh, into the dispatching. Because this is, this is the biggest secret that a lot of dispatchers out there, they're telling you, yeah, you know, uh, you're a truck driver. I am the smart dispatcher. I know what I'm doing, okay? I can get you anyway. I can get you the million bucks. It's, there's no rocket science to it, okay? It's just simple. Uh, this is, it's just a matter of learning how to, uh, uh, how to utilize the map, first of all, but also to understand, you know, where the markets are, when they change, and to be there at the right time. This is the big difference, you know, with a bad dispatcher versus a good dispatcher. Bad dispatcher, uh, he just goes on the load board and books a load, okay? A good dispatcher, he learns the market, he knows the market, he knows what's to expect, and he knows how to read this type of maps to be able to get you uh, to book uh, the next load. Learning this ain't hard, okay? Uh, we've been in business uh, f uh, for 15 years, and we've had the self-dispatch owner-operator business uh, set up uh, since 2016. It's done wonders. Uh, we have a lot of owner-ops that are doing this, and it's very, very doable. Uh, the best thing is you have full control over how, where, and where you drive. And uh, learning this uh, can get you, um, you know, after uh, doing this for some time, you will be able to do this without having to look at this map. This is what many, many years type of dispatchers, you know, differ from others because they've done through these cycles so many times that they kind of know, okay, Florida is going to be bad during this time. We got to get, you know, if it's towards the end of the year, we got to get to Washington uh, because of the, you know, apples there. I mean, everybody in trucking who's been doing this already knows these type of stuff. And you will too. Eventually you will too. 
So there you have it. Um, in conclusion, I mean, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing hard about this. Um, PDP does uh, bring all of this for you at no additional charge. Uh, it's only for uh, the BTOs, the owner operators that are with PDP. Um, yes, and we are actually working on uh, utilizing this data to rate every load and much, much more uh, that's to come. Uh, but the idea is this, supply and demand cycles, they happen again and again, again, those two cycles. Are you seeing the pattern? Are you seeing what's, uh, uh, you know, what's going on? Because if not, then you have been just simply driving, okay? Not strategically planning your business. Look, I'm not against drivers. I know of some good drivers out there. My, uh, my dad is a good driver too, uh, but you gotta understand. You gotta work smart, not hard. Switch to working smart, not hard. And uh, uh, we're here, uh, uh, you know, uh, reach out to us online, uh, uh, go to uh, www.pdptruckinginc.com, sign up. Uh, we do have promotions for trucks uh, that we're working on for trailers also and check us out Thank you so much for this time. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. Have a blessed day Ready. So while uh, Myra is working with you on the chat with the names if she, uh, if, uh, she missed anybody uh, I'll go ahead and continue uh, just uh, uh, a little bit uh, on that video. If you uh, if you miss something or if you want to see it again, it will be available online uh, after today, uh, so you can watch it again and again if you like uh, on a YouTube channel, uh, PDP's YouTube channel. Uh, I did uh, want to just add. Uh, somebody was a uh, question uh, had some questions in the chat. There is actually two maps uh, as you can see on my screen right now. Uh, you got the reefer uh, trending capacity and the van trending capacity and uh, uh, you can see that it's uh, you know it's different so it's very important for you which which trailer you're using if you have a reefer you can actually use both uh, because if you're in an area where you know it's bad uh, for your reefer you can switch to the van and see where you know what to expect on the van rates to probably get out of that area but that's uh, about map. Again, there's a lot to talk about it. And uh, if you want us to uh, get into it more with you specifically, we can do that. Um, it has, uh, you know, a lot. Th this map is big uh, and a lot of information and use it. Please, please use it. It's a big, big deal. Uh, but I want us to switch to the next uh, topic, um, uh, which is about drivers. Uh, first of all, I wanted to give a shout out uh, to all the drivers that are with us watching. Uh, thank you for coming on. We honor you. We respect you. Thank you for all that you do. Um, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, a, a kind of a disclaimer first, <laughs> you know, that uh, uh, everything that uh, we're about to say, uh, we do it with utmost respect. And uh, that's uh, one of the things that I've noticed that... Um, you know, a, a lot of times us as uh, uh, owners or uh, business uh, leaders or, you know, whenever we hire drivers or team members, employees, um, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's this uh, tug of war in, in some ways, you know, uh, one is pulling on the other. And in my experience, that's probably uh, everybody loses in that. Like if we work together as a team, everybody wins in, uh, in that and in my experience a lot of the good drivers actually do want uh, you the business owner to win so if you don't uh, see that or if you don't have uh, that type of driver who is rooting there for you or if on the other side if you don't have a boss that's you know respecting but also wanting you to succeed as a driver then you will always have that issue between each other and you should not even attempt uh, you know to work with uh, people like that in my experience or in my opinion because i've seen that type of uh, you know struggle what it does uh, it is just emotionally draining uh, but also uh, it it doesn't last unfortunately so 
Um, yes, but uh, I want to focus on talking about from the BTO's perspective, from the fleet owner's uh, perspective, on uh, you know some good things um, uh, on what, what to look at, out for, what things not you know to to try to avoid. Um, and this is a huge, huge topic. So you're probably gonna hear us uh, mention it more and more. Uh, but uh, I do want to say before I get in that um, uh, there's a couple things. There is a form uh, that's going around that uh, I've um, uh, sent out on the chat, and we will send that uh, email out with that uh, form again at the end of this meeting. Uh, so fill that out. Uh, there's uh, it's just a, a survey asking you how are you doing or what you know a couple of things uh, that you uh, your feedback that uh, will help us big time. But also there's a question in there, if you're a fleet owner or if you want to grow uh, as a, a fleet owner, there's a question in there, you say yes, and then uh, uh, you can sign up to um, uh, for a smaller version of what we're doing right now. And uh, that's just like an advertising right now. So if you are, um, uh, if, if, I mean, if you like what we do here, but you want it on a smaller level, so that we can uh, get it more into details with you. Maybe do like a smaller group of BTOs. Uh, maybe I'm thinking about like five or something at a time. Uh, we can uh, meet more frequently or we can meet uh, more in detail about a specific topic uh, that that small group uh, decides. Uh, and uh, yes, we could uh, probably get a lot more done. I really want to focus on uh, getting uh, you guys uh, you know, all of the, any weaknesses that you might have as a business owner, I really want to stand beside you and, uh, uh, you know, do this with you to make those your strength. Because uh, there's a lot of things that you can do, uh, uh, you know, to, to, um, um, to avoid the mistakes, uh, uh, you know, that I've done, but also uh, to kind of, uh, prepare yourself on how to grow and so forth. So that's a uh, that's a shout out. Uh, you know, just kind of uh, we want to do these uh, probably weekly, uh, most likely. It, it depends on uh, what the feedback is. So again, please fill out that form. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a more smaller uh, group. It's uh, in more details with specific topics. Uh, yes, and more in depth uh, depth to what you really really need. Um, uh, for you specifically where you at. So, yes, as far as uh, drivers, as far as, um, you know, what are advantages and disadvantages uh, to have drivers, um, there, I will say that uh, it's definitely uh, not the same thing as uh, you, the business owner, thinking that you're just going to hire anybody and uh, it's just a matter of duplicating yourself and everybody knows everything that you do and how you do and it's going to be great. If you can do this many loads, all you do is uh, take your balance sheet, uh, your uh, profit and loss and just multiply by two since you have two drivers. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, a lot of it has to do, in my opinion, is the human factor. I mean, uh, if, if we were all robots, if we could just copy our you know, uh, conscious or our mindset uh, and duplicate it one and another, uh, it would have been much easier, but that's not the case. It takes time. It takes the right person. It takes, uh, it takes so many different things. And um, uh, I, uh, the first thing that I will say that a uh, couple of years, well, more than a couple of years ago, uh, a while back, I've uh, had, uh, I've stumbled on this book, uh, and it's on my screen right now. It's called Good to Great. Um, it's an old book, I'll tell you that. And uh, yes, it has some historical old, uh, you know, stuff, but the concept is there. And this is probably one of the most important things you as a leader, um, it, it's, it takes more than just hiring drivers, buying more trucks. If it was, we would have seen a lot better success rate in the whole trucking industry. Why do you have trucking companies, so many of them opening up and then so many of them going bankrupt? 
uh, you know, so many of them hiring drivers and then being so discouraged and just kind of, no, I, I'll just do it myself. And they shrink to a smaller, uh, you know, uh, company. Why does that happen? And uh, if you want to make the same mistakes, then go and right ahead and just do not learn from anything. You know, just try it out. I'm telling you, you're going to waste your time, unfortunately. You're going to waste a lot of money. Uh, one of the biggest things that I've learned is, uh, you know, you cannot, you cannot always control the people or, uh, you know, even, even with all the control that you can have as a business owner, you still cannot force them uh, to everything that you can force yourself. So in my uh, biggest, I guess, defense uh, or my experience on this is you cannot, you cannot uh, force others to do everything but you, uh, to change, but you can change yourself. It's not that uh, dealing with people, uh, you know, all of a sudden you have these perfect people through the door. No, it's you get better uh, as you deal with people, you get better on choosing the right people and so forth. But this book, uh, it has a lot of different concepts. And I mean, I can talk hours and hours just about this because this is big, big deal. Uh, I would say if you use this concept in business, any type of business, not just trucking, uh, but you know, we're talking trucking, so especially trucking for us, uh, as a fleet owner, this is huge. This is huge because how you approach with the drivers is really, really huge. Um, you know, there's these uh, uh, big uh, words in there like, you know, first who, then what. Uh, it talks about uh, the right people on the bus. I mean, all of that is true. It talks about a level five leadership. I mean, this is, again, I'm not going to go into all the details, but this is real. I've experienced it myself. And when I started to apply a lot of these stuff, uh, you know, throughout the business, uh, I mean, you guys uh, probably felt a lot of this. You just don't know it, <laughs> you know. But as you read through the book, you'll be like, wow, wow. Uh, so I definitely strongly, they ha they do have a audible uh, version where you just listen to it. So this is perfect when you're driving and, you know, just, I think it's only like eight or nine hours uh, long and you can just break it down. You can literally listen to it in a day or two. Um, yes, but... Um, there's a lot of uh, things uh, to say on you as a leader, uh, and it's very, very important uh, uh, because everything kind of, uh, you know, draws from the, everything builds on that. Um, I've met, I'm telling you, so, so many uh, fleet owners that they just jump into this and uh, they, uh, they get so excited. Well, you know, uh, I will have 10 trucks. And, they, and uh, I remember there was one guy who, uh, he was a young guy and his family member says, look, I'm tired of this trucking I, I, or something to do with uh, uh, physical, like he couldn't do trucking anymore, uh, uh, health. It was physical health. So he basically said, here's a trucking company, 10 trucks, you figure it out. And uh, it was it was very hard to see because... Uh, the guy would basically hire just anybody. Oh, you can breathe. Here's the key. Oh, my gosh. So many issues that came with that. Um, and, uh, you know, the guy says, well, I brought you 10 trucks. Uh, you know, uh, you should uh, you should treat me as this, you know, someone that, uh, you know, above everybody because I got 10 trucks. You know, shouldn't I be ahead of everybody else? And I'm just like, I wish... I could explain to you with all the time in the world, you know, that it, it's it's not going to work, <laughs> you know, like the way you're, uh, uh, it's all your approach, you as a leader and, uh, you know, showing the drivers, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it'll be your own undoing. And then, you know, later on, long story short, it was sadly true. Uh, but uh, you as a leader, how you react how you build your company, uh, who you hire, who you, uh, you know, it's very, very important that you have uh, all of this, uh, you know, figured out even before uh, you start uh, hiring. Um, yes. 
And then uh, a lot of the things that uh, we can talk, we can talk about practical things. But obviously, uh, you know, with experience, uh, you will uh, understand it and it'll become easier. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the people, you always have uh, drivers that say they're great drivers, but they have bad record. You know, you always have drivers that uh, are amazing drivers, but, you know, they're not going to just fall into your lap all of a sudden, at least not all the time, <laughs> you know, and like, woohoo, you, you got a perfect driver and every single person is a perfect driver. It's just mathematically not possible, probability not possible, but in reality also because we're all humans, that's not possible. So what do you do, right? Uh, how do you, how do you, <laughs> you know, deal with this? Um, with experience, it gets easier, okay? As you build up uh, one by one, you can do it. Uh, but, um, uh, and also the, uh, the, the profit, it is possible, okay? But this question of, I mean, it'll take me a long time to explain, you know, the advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, uh, there are great advantages that uh, you are able to eventually, once you build up, once you, uh, in time, you will be able to have more time off. You will be able, uh, you know, the advantages are so uh, amazing that um, um, uh, it's going to be worth it at least, in my opinion, it's worth it to me, it's worth it with my family, it's worth it, uh, you know, in time, in due time. But it doesn't just all of a sudden happens in a month or two. You know, they have a saying, uh, uh, you know, Dallas hasn't been built, uh, you know, overnight. It's true. You don't get a city built just all of a sudden. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, people, uh, investing their time. But you know, the people that did the investing, they're the ones who are going to reap the rewards the most. Financial re rewards, and then some priceless rewards uh, that cannot be measured uh, in money. Okay? But it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Because uh, I've seen, um, uh, I guess, one of the uh, negative things or one of the hardest things to see is when I have a fleet owner that's just full of himself or, you know, just his attitude is all this and that. I know this, I know that, you know, um, it's really hard to work with people like that. Uh, however, it's even harder when you have a driver trying to do the best thing that he can do to his knowledge, uh, but yet he is afraid or doesn't know how to approach you. You know, because uh, your uh, lid can be easily, <laughs> you know, uh, taken off through the roof uh, with anything uh, you say. You know, uh, you always have to walk on the eggshells and stuff like that. So the attitude and, uh, you know, your, uh, uh, your approach as a leader is a huge, huge thing uh, to success. Um, but... It, 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 I'm telling you, the advantages, uh, and uh, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, the disadvantages, uh, uh, it has its own, uh, you know, pros and cons on uh, having drivers. But um, in my experience, uh, if you want to uh, be uh, a fleet owner, you have to deal with people. You have to deal with um, all the hassles and all the time that you have to put in. It's not, it's not like, oh, okay, it's 5 p.m., I just clock out and go. At least not in the beginning, okay? You have to build it up, and eventually you can get to that, but it's not like it's going to happen all of a sudden. Uh, and a lot of times you do have to pick up the slack, uh, 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 especially when you're a small operation, uh, but uh, yes, um, I want to open up a little bit more um, uh, uh, for questions and answers on this topic. Uh, so I want to hear a little bit about you, uh, what you guys think. But I really, really want to um, uh, spend uh, this specific topic. You know, the more I was thinking about it, like, oh, man, there's so much to talk about the drivers. 
I really want to be able to uh, deal with specific uh, BTOs, maybe in a smaller group. So I really encourage you to uh, fill out that form and let's talk in more details because it's awesome that we have, uh, what do we have, like 60, uh, 60 66 uh, yeah, owner-ops right now uh, joining us and that's great, but it's not gonna be possible for all of us to speak up all at once. So I really, really encourage you, let's talk about this in more details, uh, but there's a lot to say why the owner operators uh, that want to grow, they work out and why they don't. This is just a preview, I guess, uh, you know, but uh, there's other things that I do want to mention. Um, um, yes, that um, expecting just to hire someone and filling in your shoes uh, without coaching, I mean, it's just crazy thinking. But I've found myself doing that in many times, especially in the beginning, um, you know, because uh, you don't think that you need to do all of that because like, hey, it's common sense. Everybody knows that. Well, no, <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of times they come from a different background uh, uh, with other uh, structure and it doesn't fit into what you're trying to do. Or uh, a lot of times they're, if they're new, uh, to the industry, they don't have any uh, experience or knowledge of how to do it. So it, it, it has its own pros and cons on, you know, the experience versus with experience. Um, I prefer uh, to deal with people specifically who are just flexible. I mean, it don't matter if you have experience or not, but if you're flexible, uh, then yes, I will most likely hire you as a driver or an employee versus somebody who is completely inexperienced. I try to stay away from the completely inexperienced because usually actually there, it is a historical uh, fact, uh, I mean, a statistical fact that in the first year, uh, owner, uh, the drivers will make the probably the most mistakes uh, in their career. Uh, and then after that, it gets better. So if you have somebody who pretty much survived the first year and now you're trying to hire them, uh, by that time, they have somewhat knowledge in the industry and they still in it, you know, they didn't quit. So uh, that's probably one of the best uh, things that you can do. But hiring somebody with experience, uh, a lot of experience, it, it, it could be great or not. It depends, again, on the person. If the person is flexible, you got a golden driver. But if, uh, if that person is not flexible, if they're very just, no, this is what I want, blah, blah, you know, um, it depends if they can actually drive or not uh, in many ways, of course. Uh, but I've seen a lot of drivers or uh, uh, employees that I've had to deal with that just, you know, become all of that. Oh, well, I'm a driver. I know what I'm doing and all of that. But mistakes do happen. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes they're very costly. Uh, because uh, uh, they don't know specifically uh, your structure or what you're trying to do, your culture or something like that. So um, I, I like experienced, actually. Uh, I do. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, the attitude outweighs the experience many, many times over. This is true with anybody that I, that I deal with. This is a secret of mine. <laughs> um, yes, but... Um, Dealing with people does not, uh, you don't uh, all of a sudden start getting perfect people. That never happens. You just get better at dealing with people and choosing the right people uh, and uh, coaching them uh, to make them that, those perfect people that you want to work with. Okay? I hope that makes sense again. Um, uh, I do like to do uh, 30, 60, 90 days, six months, and then yearly reviews. Uh, and this is uh, very important because a lot of times uh, with, uh, with just getting busy, we, lo we lose time. We lose track of time. Uh, so if you create some kind of structure, some kind of goals uh, uh, within the company and you say, okay, I got to have, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. It helps uh, the driver to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and just kind of do a review of things. Okay, uh, what happened? Let's talk. Everything good, great. 
keep doing what you're doing. That reassurance actually helps him. Okay, I'm on the right track because they want to succeed. I mean, their job depends on it, right? Um, but uh, if not, I mean, okay, this is where I need you to correct yourself. This is where the goal is. Uh, and that's another big point, like uh, talking uh, and explaining what your goals are. It's very, very big deal because, um, you know, they want to know uh, how to make you happy as a boss, obviously. I mean, um, but uh, if you don't tell them that, I mean, how would they know that they failed or that they succeeded? So, you know, uh, uh, having a routine uh, sit down that kind of reminds you to, okay, yes, let's sit down and just have an overall talk. It helps a lot for them and you. Um, yes, but uh, uh, try to define uh, the definition of a successful driver. Uh, this is this is really uh, communication. Uh, your goals, it's huge. Uh, you know, you have to. Uh, in many ways, I would say over communicate, especially in the beginning, uh, so that they get it. But how can you expect them to, you know, succeed with your successful definition if they don't even know what the definition is? You know, so uh, yes, but communicate with them all of that. Um, okay, yes, I got a lot, a lot more, but we are coming short on time. So um, again, topics like this, uh, and another thing, like it's great that we're talking here uh, and me talking mostly, but I wanna hear it from you. I wanna open up the floor for everybody uh, before we get into uh, all the other stuff. But uh, please, 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 uh, we really uh, are interested to help you specifically in person, if you guys uh, want to have like a smaller group, please reach out, please fill out that form. Uh, I really, really do want to do much more often this type of meetings and uh, anybody who wants to join, just please uh, reach out, uh, fill out that form, but also reach out. Um, my goal for this year, um, you know, please, please understand me right. I know, I know that we're about to hit much harder times okay but believe me i've been through this this is my fifth time doing this okay if <laughs> i've done this already enough to understand that what comes up must come down what comes down must come up it's a cycle the best thing that i've noticed or that i've seen for myself is you can actually use these cycles to slingshot yourself to grow okay there's a lot of good that can come out from when everybody's running scared. The worst thing that you can do is go and run scared. Obviously, if you want to do that, I, I can't force you not to, okay? But the grass is not greener on the other side. Again, we've, I mean, I, I chuckle at this because we've had a couple of owner ops who, uh, because of markets, when they go down, they quit in wrong terms, just just horrible terms. And now they're filling out applications. Yeah, we wanna come back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, don't burn bridges. That's another lesson, <laughs> you know, do not burn bridges. Doesn't matter, drivers or fleet owners or whoever, do not burn bridges. But bottom line, uh, this is downturn uh, coming up. Believe me, it's not horrible. You can profit. In fact, we have guys who profit right now. If you are not profiting, get on those meetings with us, okay? Let us help you. Okay, let us help you. But believe me, <laughs> you know, just because you don't profit, it's not the end of the world, okay? You can do something about it. And it's in your control to do something about it. Only you can. Alrighty. So uh, we're going to switch over. And uh, right after we do the Wheel of Names, we're going to be mentioning about the MVO Award. Um, just a reminder, the first place is going to get $1,000, second place gets 750 and then we have a third place for 250 And we are excited to announce those. Um, I've been watching this all day because it changes throughout the day, depending on how many loads you book, what you know your scorecard is saying, your keep trucking, all of that has to do with 
that place that you stay on on the MVO. So we're excited about tonight's winners. Yep. Yes, but uh, before that, uh, the uh, the drawing. We get two drawings. Uh, everybody is a winner. I just want to remind because uh, everybody gets three positive points on your Correct. BTO cards uh, just by attending this meeting. Uh, but here we go with the two names. And I got the spinner right here on my screen. And ta-da, let's go. Andre. Andre, wow, that was always <laughs> close. Yes, congratulations. Okay, Andre, you have to be present here. Yes, congratulations. Hello? Congratulations, Andre. Yes, we hear you. Congratulations, Andre. All righty. All right, and then a second winner. Jason Chandler. Jason. Jason. Congratulations, are you here? <laughs> Jason, are you here? Can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Yes, I'm here. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Congratulations. Yes, thank you for attending. Thank you. All righty. And now we go to the MVO award, most valuable uh, owner operator. And uh, it is, the first name is Adam Gentry. Adam Gentry, congratulations. Congratulations. You get first place. <laughs> yes. I will say that if anybody knows how to do trucking, that's Adam, okay? Just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. Um, okay, and the second name, a uh, second uh, winner is Carlos Dawkins. Carlos, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> and it's, yes, and it's interesting because the third winner is actually Jason Chandler. <laughs> Jason, yes, congratulations. congratulations yes. Yes, so Jason, I know this is your uh, first time being on the top three. I know you've been working hard for this, so I want to congratulation for congratulate you for that. And I know that you're also getting the drawing, so big money for you tomorrow. Yes, congratulations on that. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, and well, very maybe. important. Yes, very important to understand that uh, you know, in in our opinion, uh, all of you guys are amazing. Okay. Um, this is uh, to show uh, the hard work that uh, all of you guys are doing, and I appreciate every single one of you. I do. I mean, I do wish that uh, every one of you are going to be on the first place at some point, yeah. but, you know, I'm here. We're here to help you do that, but only you can actually do that. So uh, if you're... Uh, discouraged for whatever reason, you know, with the rates or anything else uh, that's going on. I mean, I'm telling you, I've been in business 15 years. Anybody who's been in business longer than that, they can tell you that uh, all of this uh, markets, they are predictable. Okay. And because they're predictable, that's the good news. Okay. <laughs> because we can predict, because we can understand them. Uh, every single one of them is different, you know, maybe here and there. It, it always, something else happens to, you know, make the flip or something like that. But nevertheless, it, the flip happens one way or another. And if you prepare, if you know how to, uh, you know, use it to the best of it, you can come out much, much higher than this. You know, I've read this meme yesterday. I think it's awesome. Um, and... Um, um, I mean, this is just in general, right? So uh, it's very interesting. Uh, poor people spend all of their money. Middle class people uh, save all of their money. And uh, rich people invest all, um, uh, uh, you know, all of their money. So it's very, very important because uh, it's, it's the mentality and what you do. I mean, you would think, well... Uh, you know, this is hard times. You, you, you have to contrast and everything. That's what everybody does. <laughs> but uh, please, uh, please uh, understand, if you 
uh, learn uh, and uh, figure out how to do the best of this, everything that's going on, you can actually come out stronger on this. In fact, uh, next meeting, I want to talk about more on um, uh, uh, driver side uh, things. I want to talk more about the market. And there's a lot more to unpack. Uh, I don't know if you've seen all the predictions and everything that uh, uh, Freightwave says. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, a lot of times they do it on the too much uh, depressed de depression <laughs> mode. <laughs> I mean, they, I wish they go into extreme situations. I mean, I want to hear the information, but uh, just the way approach is important too. So when you're reading all of that, you gotta uh, see the positive out of it because if you only see doom and gloom. Well, then you will fall into depression, all of that. And I, I don't wish that on anybody because everybody who uses that information to, to do good, uh, they will survive and they will make a lot good money. Uh, and in trucking, uh, you don't make millions from one load. You know, you, you accumulate, you build up and so forth. And you can do it. I did it. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of other ops actually who are doing it. I know a lot that, uh, you know, grow and uh, stuff like that. And you can do it too. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Don't, sorry it took a little longer. But uh, yes, uh, we want to reach out to you. We want to help you as much as we can. So reach out to us. Uh, let's do this together. Thank you for joining us next meeting next month. We'll see you. God bless. June 13th. Be safe. June 13th. We'll see you then.